Hello, my name is Rick Carson, and today we are trying to get the sound of the Fender Bass 6 from the Cure song, Pictures of You. This is an interesting sound because the Bass 6 is not quite a bass and not quite a guitar. It is a six-string instrument that is typically tuned one octave below the guitar. In an article from the year 2000, Robert Smith is quoted as saying when asked, how do you get your signature six-string bass sound? It has always gone through the same three boss pedals, a digital delay and a chorus with a touch of noise gate to cut off the delay. And I've always played it through the same early 80s PV Ultra head and 4x12 cabinet. The six string bass sound is the one thing that has stayed the same since the Faith album in 1981. I've never changed the setup because I always thought it sounded really good. It's like a cello for me, a really perfect sound. On the PV, the middle is rolled off completely and the bass is half up. The treble is full up and the presence is set to about half. This really reflects my character, but things are invariably set to 0, 5, or 10 on my amps. I never go for anything in between, because that's just fussing about and it never gets you anywhere. The pedals are always set so that they look right. This sounds a bit stupid, but in a strange way, it works. There are four knobs on the delay, and they're all set at 12 o'clock, apart from the knob on the far right, which is slightly off from 12 o'clock at 800 milliseconds. That is an unfortunate design. Boss obviously didn't have me in mind when they made that pedal. On the chorus, the left-hand knob is at 10 o'clock, and the right-hand knob is at 2 o'clock. It's symmetrical. This isn't insane, you know. If you've played enough, you sort of know what something is going to sound like by looking at it. So we started with the Boss CE2 and the DD2, which are the pedals I believe Robert was using at the time and describing in the article. And from there we put our Fender Jaguar Bass 6 through the pedals and into an amp sim to get started. The first thing that we notice is how much thinner the sound was compared to the recording. This could be attributed to the fact that we're using the Jaguar version of the Bass 6, but interestingly enough, earlier in the article he's quoted as saying, I bought one of the new ones, they started remaking them, and they're really middly sounding. They weigh about half as much, and obviously that's not going to sound the same. I don't know what they left out, but the 60s models are really heavy, solid guitars. So that is interesting, because right off the bat, the instrument that we were able to get our hands on was sounded very different from the one on the record. We ended up relying a bit more on EQ than I would have hoped, but in the end, I believe we were able to dial in a tone that is very reminiscent of the sound on the record. For the amp sim, we ended up landing on the SJ50 from IK Multimedia's Amplitude. It's based on the PV5150, which was designed by James Brown, who also designed the PV Ultra. We recreated Robert's settings from the article using the clean channel of the SJ50, but with the Jaguar Bass 6, we felt adding a little bit more low end on the SJ50 got us closer to the sound we were after. That being said, the Boss Chorus and Delay pedals got us very close to the original sound on the record. I didn't think it was quite the same, and maybe it's because of the CE2 that we have personally, but the chorus just didn't sound as lush. That led us to our next discovery. We then tried to recreate the sound in the box, and we ended up going with the Eventide Triceracorus in place of the Boss. To be honest, Triceracorus ended up sounding lusher and more like the sound of the CE2 on the recording. We had all of the detune features turned off for the most part, and we set our rate to 0.76 Hz. We had our depth control set to a spread of 62 to 65. Next, we set the delay to roughly 6 milliseconds, which isn't really a feature offered on the boss pedal, but we thought it helped. The next thing we did to try and match Triceracorus to the CE2, and to be honest, the control that I felt helped us get even closer to the sound on the record than my pedal, was the tone cut knob. We ended up on a setting of 28. Setting the tone cut to 28 seemed to be the magic spot that helped the plugin really match the tonality of the pedal and get us even closer to the sound on the record. After that, we followed it up with a stock Logic Delay plugin. This setup, in our opinion, came closer to recreating the basic sound than the vintage Boss pedals did. There are a lot of layers with tons of effects on the original recording, and the three Triceracorus modulation sources definitely could have helped get us some of the lushness of the layers of the recordings. They also could have added more chorus in the mix, and if you listen closely, it may be that there is even a slow bit of flanger applied to the whole song. Of course, we didn't come close to recreating all the layers and details in the original production, mostly just focusing on the rhythm section and the bass 6 parts, but even then, it was enough to get us feeling very close about the sound. Another interesting note is the way the bass 6 is played on the song. There are a lot of drone notes played on the high E string, and the melody is strummed instead of picked. This technique combined with the sound of the chorus and delay really helps round out the sound compared to picked individual notes. Robert can be heard strumming his bass six on many Cure songs. Thank you so much for checking out the sound with us and we really hope you're having a wonderful day. If you can, try and play a little bass six.